dominant forms of hip hop, thin, bubble gum like, hollow, shallow, stimulating body, no stirring of soul, which is very, very sad, because young people need soul stirring music. Yeah, like what up? Luxurious. Drums and ammo. Ghetto. Gifty. And bottom. It's a bad up, baby. Uh. <laughs> Check. Oh, what it is. What's up? What's up? Oh, looking you know, good. Look at you, know. fresh, fresh. Yeah. Well, say thank you. Looking great. Man, you know, I always hoped I would catch you somewhere like at a coffee shop, like just by ourselves and be like, man, let's just go, man. Go yip yap and flap. Give me like 30 minutes. You know, that's what I always was like. You know, I always <laughs> hope to catch that organic, just you know, catch you in the street somewhere. Go, oh man, this is yip yap and figure it out. You know what I mean? But you no, know, but you know, I was thinking like uh you was there like when I was recording my album at Zoo Labs. Mm -hmm. That's I think where we actually met, right? Hell no. Where we oh. met the first time? Yeah, wasn't it Zoo Labs two years ago? No, we met a couple times before that, though. Okay, okay, just in passing. Yeah. Well. Yeah, okay. yeah, we did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, we did. Yeah, yeah we did. Yeah, we did. That yeah, was like a. That was. I. I mean, that was the. It was um, me getting to the zoo lab was, was based off of like you know, me being and just floating around and I knew Tim House and and yeah. you know I'd go. I was just I started to become like a, uh, like Grateful Dead. They used to have people follow follow me around. <laughs> So that's I was I was I was I was like man I need to come up with a name like no, a, dude, and I was you like, was a deadhead and I was like a student I was a student I was an I student you know what I mean I was following you around you feel me I was like yo where are you at so that's yeah, yeah. that's so, hella you know, funny you know it's, it's hella funny because I see like my friends make up all kinds of shit um with it my one of my favorites is ah stupid <laughs> <laughs> Ah, uh, stupid. But my my other homie calls me Mama Stu. I'm like, oh, oh I love that one. one. That's the my, one. Mama but... Stu. Ooh, Mama Stu. Well, let me give you proper intro. So the the podcast is called This Is the Third. Been doing it for a minute. Um, you know, like I'm not even a super zoomy. I'm not super zoomed up. You feel me? Like I'm <laughs> I'm grinding into this like. Uh, new yeah. world of like interviews and stuff like that so i don't i mean i'm still getting my my bearings you know what i mean yeah i feel it you know i was supposed to well i thought i was hooking up with trackademics you know this morning uh -huh. i was supposed to, yeah I was, I was gonna talk to him earlier but i got when we, i got my my messages all twisted up in my timing but i'm gonna catch him somewhere down the line like maybe next nice. week or something oh but, cool yeah but That's cool. so for the Folks that are may not be familiar, this is Astu. She represents the Bay Area. She represents San Jose, <laughs> Oakland, Oklahoma. <laughs> oh God, no! Oh, 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 she, 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 that's when the record goes. Okay, what? No, but no. You know what? Oklahoma can be like uh, the. Oh, I don't know. You know how you learn from what not to do? Mm, mm -hmm. <laughs> but no, Oklahoma is my beginnings. I was there till I was three. I was born there and then came out here to the Bay. So thank God for that. But yes, okay. Yeah. Call me, call me out. Call me out. Origin. No, this is like, you know, this is origin That's story. True. So you, you got to you gotta pay respects to the, you know, to the foundation, right. to the roots. The and yeah. how it popped yeah. off. But the yeah. way that I was introduced to you was through DJ Jack, you know, one of my oh, homeboys. Yeah. And that yeah. Was so, so me, like in my life, people that bring me music that change my life, those are like, those are the people that are that I keep around me. And it's mm. not just people, you know, it's not it's not a gang of people, mm. you know. It's, mm. But those people that bring music to to me, because I'm, huh. I'm a music, I'm a fiend. Huh. I'm a music, you know, like that's all, that's all I'm about. Uh, well, so when he brought that to me, I mean, I knew my life was different. You know, it was one of those, straight up. It was one of those, I'm, you know, it's one of those like, like mar it was a marker. It was a mm. marker in my life and, and wow. I knew, I was like, oh, okay. 
And I'm like, oh, she's local? Oh, mm. sure. You know what I mean? But I'm going to mm. be, I knew I was going to figure a way to be like, I need to be around this because this is just something that I'm, I'm I, I, I feel obligated to support and, you know, put out there as much as I can and put as many people on to you as a, you know, as, like, you know, but with thank that said, you. and then I wanted to say thank you too for having me come to the studio. I never really got to formally say thank you, you know, for having me through because I was a, you know, that, and, and even being there for that, for that, for that session, it, um, it made me realize, like, I kind of had an idea, like, musically, I'm like, I, I'm like, damn, she's inviting me to the studio. That's cool. You know what I mean? That's cool. But I'm like, her, I don't, I think your process is, is way custom. Like you don't go in there and just play beats for you. And mm. go, or maybe, I don't know, maybe it does work. It might, it might work, you know, it might work both ways, you know, but I felt like what I was coming through with, I was like, oh, I'm coming through some hip hop joints. I'm like, eh, I don't know what that, I don't know if that's really, but with that said, I'm still happy that I, I got to sit up and, and kind of get a vibe of the process, especially for it to 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 evolve into alters. I don't know. I don't even know where you were at, at the in the in the process of the album when I came through, but beginning. That's what it felt like. Ooh. Beginning. Yeah. I mean, there were a couple songs that me and my keyboardist had been working on a little bit, but really still didn't know what they were. Bargains was one of them. Mm -hmm. Rollin was one of them. Mm -hmm. Um, and those two, I think, actually were being formed the same time, around the same time G4U was, but it was nowhere near, you know, it was like a seed still, you know, those two songs. So we brought them with us just thinking like, okay, maybe something will come out of these, you know, um, but they weren't even like, I think we had some melodies, a few words, like not much at all. So it's like absolute beginning. Whew. Straight up. Yeah. Cool. So let's get into, let's get into the 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 roots you know of where the music mm. started and the influence oh i'm glad see i was gonna ask you to do that too cheers buddy i was like bomb you know what I'm <laughs> i got this from Mexico. oh yeah. love that I was, hoping, I was gonna i was gonna text you too man get something to drink get cold <laughs> you know what i'm saying so we get, get into it but um so get let's get into some of the early influences because you're mm. i can't i can't really place you in a solid cat category you know even when i first when i got patterns i was describing i was like ah, oh, it's it's so but it's kind of electronic y mm. kind of like you know what i mean like it, it just doesn't it's not an easy you know it's not an easy play to just go this is what it is and you know mm. so, so what are your like i really want to know like what are your influences <laughs> Whew, yeah. So I grew up like being strictly only allowed to listen to like church music, you know? So, and that wasn't just like black church music. Okay. So it was like, my parents were first and foremost, like had a, were pastors of a, an Eritrean church. So I heard a lot of Eritrean church music. Then I heard a lot of white church music and I did and heard a lot of black church music. So that was my like first start. And then as we got older, I was really influenced by my brother's case, which was like a lot of like rock. Mm -hmm. Like he was into like Green Day and Nirvana and fucking uh, System of a Down. Mm -hmm. um, and then I met my friend um, and she introduced me to just hella hip hop, like fucking Biggie and uh, Bone Thugs and Harmony were, were big for me melodically um Tupac and then that was probably like around fourth grade and then I just started getting into like it was just always like my brother's influence so it was like a lot of like Jimi Hendrix Pink Floyd um I, they're like who I can say like oh like I love them Pink Floyd for me actually um Roland the end of Roland like the last section was very influenced by Pink Floyd I was like I mean you know yeah 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 um so yeah, and then, but for me, vocally, it had always been, <clears throat> from early on, it had been Mariah Carey, Aretha Franklin, and Ella Fitzgerald. 
those three those three for me were like the people that's how I learned to sing like I would like listen to them I listen to like five seconds and just try it repeat and just till I could mimic it mm -hmm. and so yeah and then you know as I got older it was I would have to say the main influence for the past I don't know how long but like of my adult years has been Frank Ocean oh okay okay yeah and Frank Ocean for me is just like I think he's really I mean in all ways I adore him but like his um I love that he's genreless mm -hmm. and I love that you can see that he's actually like, he has a, a mix of so many influences that it's new, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so I just always loved his fluidity. Um, so Frank Ocean, I would have to say like- Is the kind of like the mm -hmm. contemporary influence that's really like, that's happening yep. right this minute. Yep. Yeah, he's the one. I was gonna say, uh, how do you feel about like performing now? Like I did a show during the quarantine, you know, and um, mm -hmm. the cats that, that I was performing with, you know, it was it was a small crowd, small crowd, but the cats I was performing with, they really kind of embraced the idea of it being a small crowd. Cause these are guys that like, you know, we could, they could perform in front of thousands of people, but they still felt they were like, man, this is kind of cool, actually, kind of just performing in front of a small mm -hmm. crowd and kind of just being intimate. So how, how do you feel? I know you performed a couple of times over the quarantine. So how have you how have you embraced the performance aspect of it? You know, I don't think I've embraced it yet. Mm -hmm. um, I think that <clears throat> I think. I mean, I've done a, quite a few uh, shows where I've just, uh, it's been me and my, my camera, you know, and just my SP. And those I've actually really enjoyed. Um, and I've done a few in studio. I mean, I guess I've enjoyed all the ones that I've done, but it's just so different. Like having the, the intimacy and like the, the energy of the crowd there is just like, you know, it's what it's about really. Um, but um, I have done, so over the past three years or so, I've, I've done this, um, this uh, Airbnb residency at this small winery in, in San Francisco. And I really fucking miss it. Cause that was like once a month and it was never more than like, I don't know, I think 40 people was always the top uh, number. And it was, it was so intimate. And it was just like, that is my favorite. Like, I love all the things. I love festivals. I love I mean, I love performing period, but like that type of small, like intimacy where you just, ah, there's nothing like it. Cause really what we want to do is reach people and touch people and connect with people, you know, and to be able to, the big crowd, it's almost like, I don't look at people, you know, you can just look over yeah. them, you know, cause it's so intimidating, but the smaller crowds, like I can look into their eyes and it's just, it's really nice. And then I can close my eyes and be alone, you know? Mm -hmm. I think that was the last show I went to before the quarantine. Was the winery show? We show at the winery, at Aristo, Ari, what is it? I wrote down the name of it. Oh yeah, Aristavi. Aristavi, yeah, I think that was mm -hmm. the one If that wasn't, I think that was the last show I went to. Damn. Before it popped off. Woo. But keep it real, I had to keep it real. So like I went to the show, you know, the Aristavi show and I, my girl, she didn't go to the show. So, so when I go to shows, you know, I, I go see, like I seen you uh, will perform with Bilal too. Uh -huh. uh, so uh -huh, I, like, uh -huh. I was like, let me just record a little bit, just record a little bit so I could send it to her and be like, oh. so I recorded it and I kept, I kind of recorded like a lot of the whole show. So not, I hope you're not mad at me though. <laughs> No, send it. No, hell no. Send it over. Send it I, over. I probably got like a good 40 minutes because I was like, Oh, usually I'll be like, let me get like five minutes. I was like, what if I just keep letting it record? And... Oh my God, I would love to see that. Oh, I'll send it to you. It's just okay. audio though. It's just audio. Okay, okay. no, that's but, great. But I'll send it to you. I'll send it to you. Okay. Um, so music, I want to talk about other stuff too. So what do, you, what do you do? Do you do any other things artistic? Why? Like, do you paint? Do you mm. do... Or do you do what what other interests do you have? Like do you cook? Do you do gardening? Do you mm. bike ride? Do you go camping? Do you do some you know, like 
what other what do, what do you do outside yeah. music that's yeah that you kind of um, passion for you know what i'm saying yeah i definitely have a passion for cooking mm. that's definitely like a like a i mean it's just nourishing period i love cooking for other people but like it's also very much so like a self help healing sort of thing i love 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 cooking um and i guess man i love to camp that's a brand new thing but i love camping i love being out outdoors um probably just actually just really i've been camping like three times or four times my whole life and I think only one of the, those times I slept in a tent mm. and the other times I slept in the car while I was <laughs> in the tent. I was like, oh, bugs. And, but this, this past year, I think I went camping like four or five times and it was, uh, it was incredible. I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. This is mine. This is for me. Um, I love yoga. I don't do it as much as I was doing it. So that's something I have to get back on. But um, I think other than that, honestly, it's like boyish, uh, my, my label. That that's my next questions. Yeah, that takes up like a, a chunk of my time. And then just started. I mean, I've always been involved in my videos. And I've always like, you know, uh, come up with concept along with my sister and then like a lot of production stuff. And <clears throat> you know, been a part of the directing, but like not full director, but I just finally started directing my own videos. So the first one was in Source of Her that I put out in November. And then this last one that I just put out in motion. Mm -hmm. And I realized, oh, film is like equally as a passion of mine as music, which is mm -hmm. crazy for me to come to that realization. So directing is, yeah that's the thing too like that's that's number number i guess i'll have to say it's number two to music right now just because she's listening but mm. he, it, it's definitely going to be uh tied for number one would you definitely would you, like, a director. Would you, would you uh direct other people's videos or, or do you just hell yeah hell yeah actually i just got asked um to direct a video that's supposed to come out in june i think I'm really excited about it. Yeah, that's definitely like I'm like, oh, I'm a filmmaker. Like I'm a, I want to make films. Whoa. That's yeah. That's breaking yeah. That's it's awesome. exciting. It's exciting. Ooh. It's so exciting. And it's you know, it's music is collaborative, but music for me has always been very like it's mine. Mm -hmm. You know, like I'm going to hold the entire vision. If it's something that's put out under us too, if it's something that's like I'm doing a feature or like the collaboration is under another name, that feels different. But if it's out under us too, like I'm holding the fucking reins, you know? Mm -hmm. And I work, I like to, that's why the only, I really only like to work with people who like where it's fluid and it's easy because otherwise it's like, I'm not trying to, I want you to feel free too as a creator, but if you're not, if I had to keep telling you how to stay straight to get to my vision, you know, then we shouldn't be working together. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, in, in film, like, you know, I think in any artistic process, it's really important who you collaborate with. You, you really should be very, like, very selective. Um, but with film, it's a little bit different. Like with film, I recognize that like, yes, I have a vision, and, but the only way that my vision is, is gonna be like realized is through other people. Like I prefer not to be in front of the camera. I really prefer other people. Like as time goes on, my music videos are gonna have less and less and less of me, <clears throat> um, which is really what I've always wanted. Um, but like, it's amazing because it's like, I'm not just, they're not just like paint colors. You know, I'm not just like a paintbrush, like, dipping my colors in other people, like, or dipping my, my brush in other people, like, they are, it's their energy and it's their life that I'm putting on screen. And so it's, it's kind of crazy. It's like, it's so much more symbiotic, I feel like. And it's so much more, it requires not just like a collaboration, but like a, an actual like melding, you know? So it's like, I don't know. I feel like there's just so much more, there's just such a joy in it for me because I, I feel so, I feel like I really have to create a space. Like I'm just creating space with a vision, but other pe it's other people's art. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like it's not just my art. So that's really, um, I really love that. It's really, that part's really exciting to me. That's sick, that's sick. So you, you mentioned uh, Boyish Records 
and mm. you know you I, you invited me to the to the meeting. Yeah. I, I, I feel like a lot of the right before everything fell apart. Fuck. We were like, yeah, we were like, it was like, oh, boom, boom, boom. So yes. like we were locking in, but um, so yeah. And that was a great meeting too. Everybody yeah. left feeling real inspired, and I met a bunch of mm. folks. That, Mm. I was that was tight. Uh, break down boyish records and where it's at, and if there's that other artists or how's it, yeah. how's it floating right now with the, the quarantine going on. Yeah, so um, I started boyish records actually directly after the Zoo Labs residency. I had met this guy Kevin, who's my my partner in boyish records. I met him actually. I was driving for Lyft like three years ago or so and he hopped in my car we got um I was playing Moses Sumney and we started talking about it he had Moses Sumney had a show that that Friday and so we were we were connected on that we exchanged Instagrams and like that was pretty much it for a year then he showed up at Zoo Labs he was like a former resident and he was teaching a class on finances and I was like oh yeah like I don't know shit about that. <laughs> let me get it. Let me get up with him afterwards. So <laughs> afterwards we had a meeting and we were just supposed to be talking about music. And so he was asking me my like one year, three year, five year goals. And I told him like, I think my five or 10 year goals was boyish records. Like since I was in middle school, a passion of mine has always been like helping other artists like develop. Like, I just feel like I can see it in people and I just like want to help bring that out. <clears throat> So it's always been a dream of mine. And I told him about it and he was like, well, let's talk more about that. And he was just like, why don't you just do it now? And we just started like meeting and our ideas were just so, not just similar, like they were like built up, they just kept building upon each other. So in May we incorporated like two months after we started meeting, once after the Stu Labs residency was over. <clears throat> and since then we've really just been ideating, like what is this? Because we've known, like our values are completely for the artist and like all about breaking down these walls and this like structure that's been created to where artists are slaves and can't eat, you know, but are like giving their souls, like they make us cheap, you know? Hmm. So it was a lot of like, and we're still ideating, but I think we're finally coming to some understandings um, and like starting to create, um, to, to really like manifest some things, but like we recognize that it was gonna take time because we're literally, and there's there's tons of other people out there obviously doing, doing this too, but we're literally creating something brand new in the wake of this giant that's still there, you know? And like, so our values are for the artists. So artists um, like financial sustainability, um, artists, freedom for creativity, mental health, you know, like what is the whole life of an artist and how do we, how do we keep those, how do we, you know, um, encourage authenticity and creativity? How do we make sure that artists can live well? And how do we, um, <clears throat> and how do we like make mental health like the center of it all, you know? So, we have all these big ideas and we're not a traditional record label. So like when we first started, I had artists coming up to me and be like, how do I get on Boy's Record? How you gonna sign me? I'm trying, I'm trying to get on. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I was like, well, we're not quite that. And I think we absolutely at some point like want to have like the boutique label side of things where we're, where we're developing artists. But the thing is, is like, it can't be traditional. It can't be the way that it's been. And even these independent art, independent labels that are out there right now, they have to actually take more from the artists because they are so small, yeah. you know? So it's like, it's very much, it's it's a problem. It's a problem that needs a solution. So we're, we're figuring out how to solve that. But right now what we've realized is like, <clears throat> we start, we're, we're starting from the beginning. So like helping aspiring artists even like create one song. You know, like when I was, when I, before I first created my first song, like my first single and put it out, it was really fucking hard to get there. Like mentally, emotionally, like just to take that step was so difficult. If I had somebody guiding me or being there with me and, and pulling out my vision, fuck, bro, like that would have been, that would have been a whole other game, you know? And I still felt like I, I was lucky because I, 
I, I fucked around and 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 landed with Daoud. You know, I don't know if you know Daoud. Yeah. 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 So he's like ma- yeah. genius, mm-hmm. multi instrumentalist, and just so much on my vibe, like just mm-hmm. you know, incredible. So I was very blessed. But up until that point, like I was looking for my Daoud, you know, mm-hmm. and it was like three years of of me just trying to figure it out. So I think right now that's really where our focus is. It's just like people who've never put a song out, like let's 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 start there and helping guide them from there. And so I've been like the tester artist. So like we've tested hella shit on me and some crash shit works. You've been a crash test dummy. Right, and some shit don't work, okay? So it's emotionally taxing, but it's, it's very worth it. And um, so we're just continuing to do that with me. And you know, it would be lovely if I could just blow the fuck up and then just have these all these resources to put into Boyish. But we're doing, we're doing, we're right where we're supposed to be. And so we're working with a few artists right now to help them put out their first projects. Um, we had an artist grant that we um, uh, gave out at the in the fall, I believe it was. And we wanna do more of that and just like help those artists get their first singles out. And we have a lot of things that are in the works, but at the moment we're like, okay, this is what's like gonna be public facing. And then we're gonna still keep working on the back end to figure out how to scale that and then go into all the other buckets that we know artists need help in, you know? I want to talk about the difference between patterns and authors. Go, man. Okay, I love this one. Uh huh. Because if you separate those two, those are two different people. Mm. To me, I mean, it's just like as Mm. someone who's listened to both of them thoroughly, Mm. I feel like authors is like. Like, you know, like I'm here, mm-hmm. kind of, I'm mm-hmm. locked in. Patterns, mm-hmm. was, patterns was dope, but, but it felt, it felt looser. It's, it was, a, yeah. it was, and you know, it was, it was more like, um, it was more, I almost want to say playful, more mm-hmm. playful. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, it still, it still embodied like some, de- it, it was, it had depth to it, but it feels like alters is like you stepped up to a different mm-hmm. De- you know, a different level of detail in yeah it, and just vocally like it feels like vocally you had you're getting more dynamic more just like you're mm. playing with your voice you're, mm-hmm. you're experimenting with ways mm-hmm. to deliver mm-hmm. what what's the what was the, the the different process in both of those albums if that's yeah answer I don't know. Yeah, no, no, that's beautiful. Thank you for asking that. Um, yeah, patterns. I mean, I write from, I write where I'm at, you know. Um, and <clears throat> you know, it's funny because I think really when it comes to projects, I always have like every three years or so, I have a question that I ask the universe or something I ask the universe for, you know, and that's become that becomes my focus. And with patterns, it literally was like, you, I want to. I mean, it's always based on I want to see right? I want to see myself. I want to look into myself, but patterns was like, okay, what it, what are these patterns that I keep repeating? Like how, why am I, why am I in this cycle? You know, and patterns was my first project. And it was something that I was like, okay, but you got to do this. Like I had a, I set a date of February 26th. I don't know. It was February something. Mm -hmm. (laughs) and um oh shit my bad my battery is hello okay um so I set a date for myself and I this was like August of 2017 and I was like I'm I'm releasing this by February of 2018 and it was a thing where I was like bitch if you don't do this you're you're never gonna do this so you just got to put your foot down and make it happen so I was working with Daoud thankfully and it was very much so like um 
I mean, working, I think with one person is so different than working with multiple people. And so I really, I had songs and I had melodies and I would bring those to Dawood and he would like create around them. And then some of the songs like Patterns actually was the only one on the album where it was like, he, he had written this thing We were I was over there and he had like played and written this thing. I was like, oh, I need that. And I took it home and I just like wrote patterns to that. <clears throat> and then um, the, the rest of the songs, I had like written some stuff, and had some melodies, and then he just like made them flourish and blossom. And, you know, it was just, yeah, it's just crazy. So that was a pretty like straightforward thing. Um, it was just like, you got to get this done. You got to do this for yourself. Um, and then... And that's where I was at, like emotionally, spiritually, physically. And then altars came from a question that kind of sounds dark, but it's not. Like, I think this is something we all, you know, need to face. But I asked, like, what is my, I want to know what my relationship with death is. Because my whole life, like, it's been present, you know, and my whole life, it's been like this negative thing that I'm trying to run away from. And, um, face that in a lot of like mental health suicidal kind of stuff which I think a lot of people go through and and yet it's so taboo to talk about which is such bullshit um but that was where the question was and that was different because I was working with so many people and with that I had a vision patterns it felt like it just happened like patterns felt like I had written stuff and of course like we are everything comes from ourselves so it's going to be cohesive most most likely so um I didn't really know what it was until it was finished but with altars like I knew before you know I knew what I wanted and so working with all these people and basically as like a paintbrush and colors I mean like this is what I hear this is what I want and just really taking the time and creating the space to just and putting money into that shit like that was a huge part of it but like taking the time and having the space to ruminate and I mean before the album even came out like I read I was able to like read the lyrics and write you know really write like what is it that I'm saying here and really like study and and dive into it so I mean and that's what I've been doing in my own life for the past two three years but yeah, patterns was very intentional. And I mean, patterns, uh, altars was very intentional. And there was definitely some songs that just came, you know, um, but they came out of where I was out in, in the moment. So, and I had a vision from the beginning. I was like, I want this to take people on a journey. And I don't, I don't sonically want everything to sound the same. You know, you hear albums and it's like, it's great because you're like, I'm in this mood. I'm in the zone, then, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I want to stay in this place. But that mm-hmm. album, I was like, no, nah, I can't be that. Like, this has to represent who I am, which is like the ups and the downs and, and all of that. Like, and that's what I got. So. That's crazy. Yeah. So, in, so how many how many other producers did you have on Alters? So Dawood was like on like damn near like 75%. He... He co-produced, I think like four songs, five songs, and then he produced three, I believe. Yeah, I think three. I have to go back and look. Yeah. But um, uh, but um, I worked with, let's see, Tofu Jack, Trackademics, Dawood. Um, Let's put you on. I can't be talking out. Yeah. Rob, my, my keyboard is Rob. Mm-hmm. Gavin, you know Gavin. Gavin. Uh, shit, what's wrong with me right now? I'm just forgetting everything. Gavin, he. If you don't know Gavin, you and Gavin would be. Oh my God, I gotta <laughs> tell you, but his music too is beautiful. He's an artist, like he sculpts, he paints, like he's a genius. Mm-hmm. Produces, he's an absolute genius, but he's also a monk. Like oh. sometimes you see him, but most of the time you don't. But you guys would be buddies bro mm. like same tribe same Ooh. tribe okay i'll okay. try to introduce you guys i haven't talked to him in a, in a little bit so he's but, not doing instagram and then like that then he has an instagram uh gavin anthony i'll send you i'll, t- I'll text you his his okay. profile yeah okay okay but gavin i'm just gonna go through songs okay that would 
Oh my God, I almost forgot. Okay. And then um, my business partner, Kevin, produced oh. scenes along with his oh. wife who played cello over it, um, oh. Mia. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. And then, so, is that that's the one that um, is a Salami Rose? Is that her name? Rose? Oh, no, that's Source of Her. Source, Source of, her. of Her. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Seems is the one that's like really like dark and moody. The, oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. So he produced that, sent it to me, and I was just like, literally wrote that shit in like 10 minutes. That song, yeah, it just came out, but it also was like in such a time of heartbreak. And like, it was like, it was just, everything was on the surface. So it just, yeah. I want to talk about your 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 partner in crime, uh, Laura. Laura Clark. <laughs> oh, how did, Laura, bro. How did that combination come together? Because yeah. you guys feel like it's like, Wonder Twins. Yeah, dude. Fucking... <laughs> <laughs> Power Ranger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Lara, I met through one of my best friends, Frank, um, who he owns um, a Revolt Silk Screen. He does like printing, like shirts and all kinds of shit. Mm-hmm. He's lit as fuck. Um, and he's just a connector. He connects like everybody. He knows everybody. He's, he grew, he's from West Oakland. I think, oh, I know Frank. I know Frank. Yeah, you know Frank. Frank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Bulky ass dude. <laughs> Bodyguard. Yeah. I met him at the, um, at the, the, the boyish. Oh, uh, yeah. Kind of come together. We had yeah. a yip, yippity, yip, flap. Yeah. You know yeah, yeah. Oh, you know what? Then you met Gavin there too. He, okay. um, uh, cause he was kicking it. He was by Frank's side the whole night. Uh, black dude, he super stylish, was probably wearing like a cute little cap. I don't know, but yeah i'll send you a shit yeah. um but um yeah frank introduced me they started dating and i met her and we just totally fell in love mm. and then she's a photographer so she was like let's do some photos so we started doing photos together and it was just a wrap, mm. it was just a wrap. that was like three years ago or so yeah or maybe a little longer but yeah it's crazy like the you know you meet those people who just like you need creative partners you know and you meet those people who it's just like, it's so symbiotic and so like, you just you just can't help but grow when you're with them. And so artistically, and just as you know, in our friendship, like we have really sharpened each other and sometimes it's hard, you know, but like we, we keep sticking to it and we have the hard conversations and it's just making crazy beautiful stuff. And she's just very like, she's a very, intentional generous like giving person and her heart is all about giving like that bitch put out so much money for the community like community portrait pop-ups that's all her, comes from her money like from her funds you know like she just everything she does she wants to give it away and I'm just like girl keep some shit for yourself <laughs> but yeah so it's just been yeah I think we have a very like similar visions and it's been really cool and we're just like we're like, oh my God, you see how Kaylani and her friend are just like making their own videos and stuff. One way, one day we're gonna do that and we're mm. doing it. She mm. filmed um motions. Yeah, okay, 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 okay. Yeah, so uh, I wanna get into that real quick, but I wanna know like who was one of the the first people that or group of people that really gave you that like mm. bet on you. The first mm. people that were like, man, you know what? I believe in what you're doing and I support it. Like, or, you know, like mm. when did that, who was that person for you? You know, early mm. on. Oh my God, that's so hard. Early, early on, right? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like the first, one of the first people that, you know, like, like my parents, I DJ, so my parents were like, yo, we support mm. what you're doing. Mm. So we're going to, you know, if you do this, we'll do this and we'll provide and we'll come mm. to make this possible. Who, yeah. You know, person for you so two people my brother and my brother's a musician he's wild like oh my god he's he plays guitar I mean his influence of Jimi Hendrix and that nigga know how to like play like he he can play some Jimi Hendrix songs he would hate me saying this but like I'm in my opinion I'm like yeah you know I see the I see the levels like are are there he's just he's so amazing his voice is beautiful so my brother, he's, he's, he's been dedicated to music forever. And I think with him, it's really been about 
just watching him be so dedicated, like has been a support for me, like has always pushed me. And I used to just sing backup for him and sing backup for other people. Mm -hmm. And it just came time where I was just like, and he would always be like, you could do it, just do it. You know, just do it, just do it. And I would be like, I can't, I can't. And then I finally was like, okay, I just got to do this. But he just in watching him was like a major support. And then my sister, my little sister, she has been, man, she supports in every way possible. She, she's an art, she's very artistic. Um, she's, uh, she's styled me from the jump. She's helped me with concepts. She's, you know, been a, a producer for like videos and always like, most of my videos, like have, she's styled mm. and just helped with concept and everything and just been on set to like do the shit, do my hair, you know, everything. Um, and financially, Jesus Christ, this bitch has put out, like put out for me. And she just always like, don't worry, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get mine from you. <laughs> like when you blow up, bitch, I'm, I'm sitting pretty <laughs> and it's real, she will. But just support in every way, emotionally, like, when I didn't have housing, like my sister is like damn near my mom. Mm. So I would have to say my sister and my brother. Yeah. So tell about, give us a, I, I got a little, I did a little bit of research. I didn't, I, I want to kind of keep it, you know, kind of like organic. I didn't want to go deep dive too much. I want to just kind of go back and forth, but what, um, tell the story of your parents. Mm. like how they how you know they're mm. used to the country and mm. kind of give like mm. a, a breakdown because that's a, that's a major part of yeah yeah right now yeah wow shit yeah so my parents are from Eritrea and there was what some people call a civil war because a lot of people consider Eritrea as a part of Ethiopia but that's not true so there was a war between Ethiopia and Eritrea, Eritrea was trying to secede from Ethiopia and Ethiopia was like mad. Um, so that is like really my beginnings. Um, there was just like an exodus from Eritrea. So a lot of, a lot of folks that, you know, you know, that are Habesha, they, um, their family was, you know, everybody knows, everybody has had family who's passed away in the war. And so they were fleeing that. Um, and they ended up in like Sudan, Saudi Arabia, like all these other places. And they met through um, a church and they started a church together. And they were like, it's a crazy story. Like they would, you know, they would preach the gospel in like, you know, Sudan where it was, or uh, Saudi Arabia, where it was like forbidden, like my mom went to jail. You weren't supposed to have a Bible. Like they found a Bible in the house. My mom, and my auntie went to jail while they were pregnant with my brother and my cousin. Um, and we're like in jail for, I think it was like 30 something days or something. My mom's been in jail in prison quite a few times in <laughs> Ethiopia, trying to escape Ethiopia, like mm. uh, trying to escape other places, trying to, you know, preach, having a Bible in, in a Muslim, you know, law. Um, so, uh, yeah, so that's where I come from, like where it's like, it, it was, and, and then they came to, they were, they came to the United States through a church. Hmm. So for them, it's like, this is life or death, you know, like Christianity is it. So I grew up in that and my whole family was always like, you're the preacher because I could sing and I was outgoing and, you know, very spiritual and like love God. And I ended up going to the same Bible college my uncle and my dad went to when they first got here in Oklahoma, back in Tulsa. I married a preacher, a man preacher. <laughs> and I bought a house, had a dog, like really was like, okay, I'm gonna, I, and I always said growing up, like I always felt so wrong. Cause like, I was just like, why is this like, doesn't feel authentic to me, you know? But I always would say, okay, I'm gonna follow Jesus when I grow up. I'm gonna, I'm just, let me just, I'm gonna be bad now, but like, I'm gonna follow Jesus when I grow up. So I did. And I am, I think about those years, most of my twenties. And I was like, sometimes I think like, damn, I wish I had, you know, 
my family was going to move to Oakland when they first got here, but they ended up staying in San Jose. And I just would be like, I wish this, I wish that. But um, now I'm just like, no, that was the journey I had to take. You know, I had to, I had to find out it wasn't me. You know, I came back to San Jose, got divorced, just like left. I had to just leave, got divorced, came to San Jose and then ended up moving. My sister was moving to Oakland from the city and I ended up moving with her, you know, like she just took me in like she always does. And it was just like, <gasps> cause I grew up in West San Jose with all white, mainly white and Asian folks. And that was a whole other fuck, like mind fuck. Then Oklahoma, which is like a total mind fuck. Oh my God. And then I came to Oakland and it was like, <gasps> this is not fair. Why didn't I know there was home somewhere? You know, why didn't I know I could be surrounded by black people and like not have to fight myself, you know? And that's where like, Oakland just nurtured me and like accepted me, you know, like right away and nurtured me to become who I am. Like, and I found out like, oh, I love the titties. And I found out like, you know, <laughs> I I respect Jesus as a prophet, but he's not my God. No, no, what no man is my God, first of all. And definitely like, you know, white Jesus is who I knew, you know, definitely not no white man is my God. And I believe like I have the same relationship that I had as a child, like with the universe and with the truth, but it's not coming through a, a white man's word, you know? So like, yeah, it's been a long fucking journey, but it's been really nice. Really. I mean, it's just been beautiful to get here, That's tight. you know? That's tight. Well, yeah. I'm going to end it right there. Mm, okay. Just a quick, you know what I mean? We got to catch up. Um, thank you. Thank you for taking thank the time you. To, thank to, you. to catch up. Um, you know, definitely, I would, I mean, we're still trying to plot. You know, I wanted to have you perform on our oh, show. Yeah. Yep. We're putting together a real, a small, intimate setting. So cool. I'll reach out to you on that one. You know, you know, man, I can't wait for that. Oh my God. Oh my God. You know, it'll be something fresh. And, you know, you could come through with the SB, whatever. Or you could come mm -hmm. through, bring Rob, and he could rock. And you know, <laughs> to me, like, like, we like to try to get the artists and combine them with some kind, something that can be purchased. So, um, I seen you rocking that hockey jersey. I was like, ooh. Oh, that's tight. Yeah, I might be blasting that out. I don't know, but that might Ooh, be. Oh, that's tight. Idea. You know what I mean? Yes. Yes. Okay, because you just, you just, I mean, like I'm telling people right now, like you got to see how Stu perform. The mm. time you performed at Zoo Lab, I couldn't even stand there. I was, you were about to, I couldn't, I was like, man, I can't even be here right now. I can't, wow. I came in the room because, you know, we were like, we were like this. Yeah. You were yeah. performing. We were like, yeah. Yeah. I was I like, love you know that, what? Though. Oh, like, let me go get something to drink because this is <laughs> like you got like you really and that that happened to at the Bilal show too like you mm -hmm. really mm. like you, I don't I mean I'm not sure what it is and I'm mm -hmm. I'm not the only person because you mm. you just have a the energy and you feel you feel something coming through mm. almost, and it's just something that to me like people ask me what I do for mental health I say I listen to Astu. <laughs> you know what I mean? oh Solid. thank you that makes me feel so fulfilled yeah straight up and, and we went back and forth kind of right in the beginning of, of the pandemic too yeah like, like we went back and forth and i just let you know like yo like that's it's really helped me in the very beginning really helped me kind of get through those first couple of weeks like you know mm. it's like yo this is um mm. yo, you know and, but with that said mm leave it right there um i appreciate it and i will keep you posted on this and you know, yes please do I see you in the street I bump, i'm always bumping it you know bumping the music and trying to i hope i'm I'm like driving around like man maybe i'll see you in the street somewhere around yo the, like the day bro like i ain't heard it yet but like i remember when i did show me your love i was like i just want to like be in a neighborhood in oakland and just hear somebody blasting it driving oh. on the street so the first day I hear somebody blasting my music, driving down the street, it's a rap. I'm like, okay, I made it. <laughs> That's it.
<laughs> okay. Thank you so much for having me. It was really like open and just like really safe space. And I love these sort of things. So thank you. Straight up, straight up. Well, it was good seeing you. You I'm too. To you peace, peace. All right. Peace, peace y'all.